Okay, I have a video here showing you how to transfer saves from your Dreamcast over to your PC for use with an emulator and then back to the Dreamcast again. Now you will need a couple things for this. You will need an SD card reader for the Dreamcast. It plugs into the serial port in the back and you'll need a compatible SD card for that. Now I went through about five SD cards finding one that worked. So if you get an SD card reader and an SD card and you find that the Dreamcast doesn't quite read it, it could be because the SD card itself is not compatible, so just watch out for that. The SD card that I do have that does work is a SDHC SanDisk, class 4, 8GB, so SDHC cards will actually work uh, despite what you may read on the internet. Now you will also need DreamShell. When you download it, it'll come in a package like this. And you have the bootloader.cdi, which you burn to a disk and place in your Dreamcast. And you have this DS folder, and you just copy the contents of this over to your SD card, which I've already done. And obviously, you will also need an emulator. Now, I use Null DC as my preferred emulator, but we will be needing Chencast for the VMS browser tool. Now the first thing we're going to do is optional and that's to create a saves folder on your SD card. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and create a saves folder here. Right click, go to new, folder, saves. Pretty simple. Alright, so you can go ahead and eject your SD card now. That's all we really wanted to do to start out with. Now we're going to go ahead and load up DreamShell. So put your SD card reader in your Dreamcast and the SD card inside the SD card reader and put the dream shell disk that you burned inside the Dreamcast. Okay, so you'll get to the screen where it says boot from RAM, CD or SD. Um, we're putting dream, we have dream shell on an SD card, so uh, it'll automatically detect that. And if you don't hit anything, it'll just go ahead and boot from the SD. Otherwise you can just hit A. Okay, so from here, we're going to go to file manager. Now you gotta be kinda careful because DreamShell will, um, at least with this build, will occasionally crash when doing this for reasons I can't quite work out. So we're gonna wanna open our SD card here. So click SD, then open our saves folder. So I think we just scroll down here. Using the D-pad is even more clumsy than the analog stick, so there we go. So with our saves folder open, we're going to want to go up to the top here where it says switch to dual or single window mode. We're going to click that so we get the second window on the bottom here. Then we're going to open up our VMU and from here select the VMU slot you want. Okay, so I'm transferring Crazy Taxi which only has one file to it right here. The uh, Crazy Taxi underscore DC. Although some games do have multiple files, especially the Resident Evil games, so you're going to want to make sure you transfer every file over from that game. So hit A on the file, then up top here, hit copy selected file, and then hit the green check mark, and you're good. Okay, so I wanted to show you an example of a game that has multiple save files, and you can see here on my second VMU, this is where I am now. Uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica, we have the system info, and then we have the individual save. So if you're transferring over a game that has multiple files, just make sure you copy and paste each individual one. But since I'm just transferring Crazy Taxi, I could go ahead and up top on the right here, hit exit from file manager. Then I'm going to turn off my Dreamcast and put my SD card into my PC. All right, with your SD card in your PC, you can go over and I'm just going to show you here. It's not really, you don't necessarily need to do this. I'll show you that under my saves folder, I have crazy taxi underscore DC, which obviously we just transferred. So I'm going to want to get that onto my uh, virtual VMU. Now, if you've been using an emulator for a while and you've already saved some stuff on it, 
you can go ahead and skip this part because what I'm going to be doing now is showing you how to go ahead and format a VMU. And I'll show you here, if I open up vmsbrowser.exe and I click vms.bin, you can see here it says free blocks 200. If I hadn't formatted it in the emulator first, it would say free block zero. And when we go ahead and try to import a save to it, it wouldn't let us. So what you want to do is format it. So to do that, I'll be using, I'll use an LDC just as an example here. Okay, so first we're going to format a VMU in null DC, and next I'll show you how to do it in Chancast. It's pretty much the same. So I'm going to open up null DC here. All right, and I'm going to go to Options, go to Maple, Port A, and Attach Controller, X Input, if you're using an Xbox controller. And go again to Options, Maple, Port A, Subdevice 1, and click Attach Null DC VMU Logitech Friendly Version, yada yada. And from there, click File, Normal Boot, and then click No Disk. Okay, so from here, you go to File, and click A on the VMU, and then hit A again, and then hit Delete All, Memory Reset. And yes, to proceed. All right, you can select the little icon for the VMU here and the color if you want to and then confirm your settings with yes and it'll go ahead and format a VMU and you can go ahead and X out a null DC now alright so you can see here it made a VMU bin file here and that's called VMU underscore data port 01 dot bin we'll get back to that in just a second um, we're gonna format a VMU in Chancast now and you'll see here why I hate Chancast so you want to go to Options, Configure Drive, and make sure that the drive letter selected has nothing in it. So, yeah, you want an empty drive when you're doing this on Chancast. Then go to Run, hit Start. Okay, and you can see Chancast runs at like a million miles an hour, and what you're supposed to do is hit the minus key to underclock it, and it goes down to 50%. And at 50%, it still runs very quickly. And I really haven't looked into it further. I just prefer null DC anyway. So go to File here. And we're going to be doing the same thing on Chancast as we did in null DC. All right, and I'm going to exit out of Chancast. OK, now say you're using null DC. And you already have some save data on your VMU bin file and you want to take that same bin file and add the crazy taxi saver the save you're importing from the Dreamcast. All you have to do is first copy the VMU data port 01.bin over here to the Chancast folder, rename vms.bin in the Chancast folder to vms.bin.bak. Now if you're not seeing uh, the .bin file extension, just click on the Windows button type show hidden or begin typing it and click show hidden files and folders and then uncheck hide extensions for known file types then apply it and then you'll see the bin file extensions either way you're going to want to rename vms.bin to vms.bin.back and then rename the null dc bin file to vms.bin all right and now you can open up VMS Browser and then click VMS.bin and you can see here mine is empty obviously we just formatted it but if you had taken a VMU bin file that you already had saves on you'd see them all listed right here so now we can import our crazy taxi save so go to import save and then find the save that you put in your saves folder on your SD card and then click write vms.bin. It's going to say VMU file saved. You go ahead and exit out now. Uh, yes, we want to save these changes. Click yes to do that. And I like playing in null DC, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this old VMU bin file. Take the one I just imported the crazy taxi save to. Paste it over here and rename it. And I can go ahead and delete the vms.bin here and rename this file 
back to vms.bin, the one we renamed with the back file extension. Okay, so I'm going to show you that it worked here. All right. So here you can see I have my A with BD Joe and Arcade. And on original, I have an S with BD Joe. So now I'm just going to go over how to transfer the save from your VMU on your emulator over to your actual VMU on your Dreamcast. So say I were to get a much higher score while playing on an emulator in Crazy Taxi, I don't have to completely lose that data when I go to my Dreamcast. I can transfer that save back over. So to do that, I'm actually, obviously I just created a new VMU file for this uh, tutorial here. I have an old one that I'm going to go ahead and get right here. Right, so I have here transferred back out for my um, VMU bin file with all my saves on it that I've had on the emulator. Admittedly, not much. I play Dreamcast on the actual console. But I do have some saves on the emulator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that back over to the Chaincast folder with VMS Browser. I'm going to rename Chaincast VMU file to vmu.bin.back like we did earlier. No, fuck. No, I don't want to open that file. And rename this VMU to vms.bin. Then open up VMS Browser. Now if I go to my VMS bin here, I have a bunch of saves here. Okay, so I'm going to export Sonic 2 here. So I'm going to highlight it. Click Export Raw. And it's going to export it into the Chaincast folder. Okay, so when I went to transfer Resident Evil Code Veronica from my null DC VMU bin file, I have to transfer these two, obviously the system data and the save itself, over to my Dreamcast, I noticed that it wasn't actually reading it. And I'm going to go ahead and show you why that is now. So I'm going to export each of these files here. And I go ahead and X out of the um, browser here. Okay. As you can see here, this is named, the system file is named re underscore cv three zeros dot sys. And this one is 001. And I noticed that that actually affected my ability to load the game. So if you've run into a problem like this, sometimes it's the way the files are named. I don't know how the files got messed up on my VMU bin file for null DC, but they did. So what I did is I renamed this with three zeros and it actually went ahead and loaded up then. So that's just a side note I wanted to point out in case you are transferring a Resident Evil save. I guess this is a pretty specific issue. In case you are transferring a Resident Evil save from your null DC bin file over to your Dreamcast and it's not reading it for some reason, just make sure the names are correct. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take this Sonic save that we exported and stick it on our SD card under the saves folder. And now we can go ahead and eject the SD card. I usually just pull it out, but recently I've been ejecting it the proper way. All right, so just hit A on boot from SD, or it'll automatically do that after a period of time anyway. So you don't necessarily have to. Okay, so go over to File Manager. All right, then open up your SD card and then open up the saves folder which I don't really think this actually yeah use the unlock stick here and now I'll have the open up and now I'll have the Sonic 2 save file here that we took off our null DC bin file so I'm gonna go to dual window mode again and again uh, it sometimes crashes when you go to dual window mode I don't know why if it does don't really worry about it just try it again you may have to give it a couple more times for it to work. Right, so I'm going to transfer um, Sonic 2 onto my secondary VMU here with all my Resident Evil stuff. Alright, so just hit A on this. And make sure it's highlighted in red. Sometimes you'll hit A on it and it won't highlight in red and it'll be a pain in the ass. There we go. And then go up top to copy selected file. Hit the green check mark. And you're good.
go ahead up on the top right here to your exit file manager and you're all set to play that's really all you need to do um, hope this helped and thanks for watching